sure we're recording here we are okay so in today's video we're going to talk about setting up a Cisco router to be used as an internet router in a home environment small office environment basically instead of buying the cheap wireless routers that you buy off the internet you're going to use a Cisco device uh, this is actually a very simple setup process um, we're going to go ahead like you have familiar familiarity with Cisco hardware in general but if you don't we'll do um, commands and that kind of thing later but in this case uh, we're just going to start from the very beginning it, you get the message here would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog we're simply going to type no you never want to do this even the most basic user should never use this dialog um, it's going to take it just a second here Maybe we can answer why on iOS 15 it takes a long time to get past this. There we go. You see my routers coming up. We're going to hit enter a couple times. We're going to enable. Almost everything you're going to do is going to be in the enable prompt. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get into the, config, the global configuration by typing config T. Enter configuration commands one per line. Now where I like to start is defining the host name and passwords of the routers. So we're going to do host and host name main router one now then let's define some passwords we're going to define the console password first line con zero line con zero password cisco login exit ignore all these logs that are coming up we'll, we'll, we'll go through all that in just a little bit um, line vty0 oops vty0 4 now this is the telnet password this allows you to telnet into the router so we're going to do the same thing as we did for the for the console password define a password log in and exit now the last thing we need to the, the last password we're going to define is called the enable secret password in this case I'm just gonna make it Cisco but you can make it just about anything you want to okay now we're actually ready to define our interfaces so we're gonna start with the interface that my internet's connected to which is int f0 zero, 0 now this is actually the short term of saying interface fast Ethernet 0 0 now you saw my prompt just changed we're in, a, we're in what's called a config if statement we're configuring an interface this case I'm actually grabbing DHCP from another device so we're going to do IP address DHCP it takes it just a second to figure that out oh and by the way we're configuring an 1841 router a pretty common router in labs no shut for no shutdown another command would be no shutdown and then exit now the opposite of that if I want to shut down the com if I want to shut down the interface or turn it off is the command shutdown. Anytime you want to negate a command in, in a Cisco device, it's the no. So in this case, if I go int f0, zero, zero, oops, int f0, zero, uh, zero, I type shutdown, I've actually just turned that interface off. That interface is now no longer alive on my router. In this case, I need it alive, so we're going to do no shutdown. You saw the log come up saying that, oh, you just shut down the command. I'm going to define my router interface now. So this is the interface going to my switch. Int F01. In this case, we're going to do IP address. Now, this is where you're going to define your default gateway address. So in this case, we're going to do 192.168.2.250.1. Now it's been defined as 192.168.250.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. We're going to turn that interface on and we're going to exit out. Now we need to start defining some routes. So in this case, I'm going to define my default route, which will be in this case IP route. 
Now, when you do all zeros like that, this is called the gateway of last resort. Now, in this case, I'm actually routing to another router on my network. So we're going to give it 192.68.21. That's basically sending it to my router that is the main network router, which in this case is a PFSense box that I have an optional interface turned on. Now we need to set up what's called NAT. This is another feature that most wireless routers handle that you never see behind the scenes. So in this case, we've got to define our outside and inside interface. In this case, my outside interface is the interface going to the internet. So in this case, this is my outside interface. I'm going to type IP NAT outside. And it takes it just a sec because it has because now it's bringing up a NAT interface. If you hear this clicking racket in the background, it's a 3D printer, don't worry. This generally takes just a couple of seconds. There we go. Exit. Now we have to define our inside interface. So in this case, int f01. IP NAT inside. Now our our interfaces are now defined to be NAT interfaces. And if I do a do show run. I'll show you that right now. Here's my interfaces in F00 IP NAT outside, IP NAT inside. So now what we need to do is we need to set up what's called the source list. This is actually where we're going to type IP NAT inside source list 1. So in this case we're defining an IP NAT command, we're defining our inside source list. Source list number is 1. Now we need to tell what our outside interface is. In this case, it's int f0, oops, 0. And then I, now you have the option to no overload or overload. I always do overload. Overload is always work. Now we need to set up our access list. So we're going to do access list 1. And this is where you're going to permit networks to get NAT translations. So permit. Now, access lists are always implicit deny. So, even though I've done all this, this network is not allowed to get NAT translations. So, we're actually going to define this. Now, this is where things get a little hairy. Oops. Now, normally you would think to go type 255 to. But that's actually not right, and that's going to not work for you. In a reverse subnet world, in a Cisco device, it's 0, 0, 0, 255. And we'll get into why that works that way later. But right now, we're just setting this up. So it, basically what it is, is if I have a 255.255.0.0 subnet mask, I would type in 0.0.255.255. .0 .255. But in this case, I'm running a 24-bit subnet mask. So we're going to set that up just like that. 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255. Enter. Now, and that network's been permitted through. One Now, one of the things I recommend doing at this point is do a do write mem. Do. Okay, why can't I write the memory? Oh, let's just do it this way. Let's exit out of the config. And write mem. What this does is this takes the running config and saves it to the startup config. Another command for that would be copy run start. Destination file name, startup config. Building configuration. I'm going to go back into the. Con I'm going to show you a couple of things. Show IP route. You see right here that my gateway of last resort is set up. But now there's one more thing we need to do. We need to set up DHCP. So let's actually do that now. So we're going to do IP DHCP pool. And let's call it main DHCP. Now then, you need to define three commands here. A network, a default router, and a DNS server. So in this case, we're going to do network 192.168. Dot 250 dot zero, 255, 255, 255 .0. This works in regular subnet world. Enter. I want to teach you a little trick here with Cisco. If I type default and I hit the tab key, 
you saw it just automatically typed out default router. In this case, my default router is 192.168.251. DNS server is, in this case, we're going to use the Comcast DNS server, 75.75.75.75. And that's it. Now your DHCP setup. Now, one of the things that I like to do personally is do some excluded addresses for random devices that need static IPs. And we're going to do IP DHCP excluded address. In this case, we're going to type a, a to and fr a, an address and then to this address. So we're going to do 192.168.250.0, of course. And we're going to do 192.168.250.6. And we're going to write that to memory. Now, we're basically configured. So let's actually connect up a PC. In this case, I'll take my little Ethernet cable here, and I'm going to plug it into my lab panel here. And we should start coming to life. So if I actually go to my PC here, CMD, I show a... Oh, wait, this is a DOS box. Sorry about that. IP config. You can see I'm actually getting an address from the router. And if I go to my web here and let's go to speedtest.net and I hit go, you can see that I'm coming up on Xfinity, Philodelic Communications. This beta thing never works. There we go. You can now see that I'm going through the router. The router is translating and I'll show that in just a second. I'll show you how to see if your router is actually translating or not. Okay, you see that I'm basically on the internet. If I go to a website like youtube.com, you see that we're on the internet and I'm able to browse freely. So, that's it. That's basically all you need to do to configure your router to communicate with a internet-based device. Now, to know that you're actually translating NAT correctly, you can do a NAT command on your enable here called show IP NAT trans. This stands for show IP NAT translations. You can see I'm getting DNS translations. You can see I'm going to some sites there. Basically, you can see that all of the translations are happening as expected. I'm actually going to hit the escape key so it'll stop. And there you go. That's basically how to configure a Cisco 1841 or any Cisco router to be an internet-facing router. Thanks for watching.